Um, sure, thanks, Craig. And thanks again to uh, Conserve Utah Valley for hosting uh, this dialogue. Um, I think it's auspicious uh, that we're having this conversation uh, on the afternoon, the evening that we've learned uh, that Grand uh, Staircase uh, Escalante um, will be uh, restored and actually expanded uh, uh, to, it, to its original boundaries. Um, and I think that's wonderful yes. uh, news uh, for us here in Utah and for, for everyone. Um, I um, uh, am a lifelong uh, conservationist. Um, I'm the son of a uh, father who, who spent his entire career working for the Forest Service. Uh, so this was an ethic that was uh, part of our family. Uh, we spent a lot of time uh, out of doors in part uh, because um, I'm one of uh, nine children. Um, and that's all we could afford uh, was to, to go camping and go hiking and to go hunting and, and uh, engage uh, in those activities. And um, it was a wonderful experience uh, growing up, actually ten being born. 10 seconds. Oh, wow. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I'm running uh, because I've tried to make uh, Provo better in every way, in, in the ways that Craig has mentioned. And I want to take that to a new level. Wonderful. Thank you, Aaron. Catrice, your reason for oh, running. Um, <clears throat> I'm running because I grew up here and I just think that Provo is the best place to raise a family. I want to make sure that my children and my grandchildren um, have the same reasons and same quality of life reasons that I want to raise my children here. So I love Provo. And one of the things that actually got me connected with Conserve Utah was the Bright of All Falls. And, you know, we met at a protest that my friend and I put together for Bridal Falls. And there's so many beautiful, like my happy places are in Utah mountains. It's Sundance, it's um, Stuart Falls and the Alpine Loop and Bridal Falls. And it's just a huge priority to me. It's a huge part of our quality of life here in Provo. It is so important that we keep conserving these spaces because it's, I don't think there's a person that lives here that wouldn't say that they live here for the mountains and the river and the views and the recreation and everything that that has to offer. So it's just essential. It's essential to Provo and it's what people think of with Provo. And when I moved away, I really miss the mountains. You take it for granted when you grow up here, but um, uh, like looking at them right now with the fall colors, it's a big deal. Love it, thank you. Well, thank you both. Um, well, let's go ahead and jump into some of the questions. Um, I'd like to start with what we're not focusing on, what, what conservation issues, issue or issues, should we be more focused on in Provo that we're currently not focused on? And uh, Catrice, let me go ahead and start with, with you. Are there any conservation issues that we should be more focused on in Provo? One of the reasons that I want to run is because I feel like we have really underutilized our river, mm -hmm. right? Um, we, we utilize it well in the canyon, but we do not utilize it well in the city of Provo. Um, I think it's really unfortunate how a lot of, we have commercial that backs up to our river all over the place. Like in the heart of our downtown, I just think it's so tragic that we didn't think a long time ago <laughs> about utilizing that river with, you know, restaurants and walkways and commercial where we're, you know, like in Austin or other cities, um, it just seems like such a waste. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. I think there's so much we could do there to help utilize that for the good of the whole city. I think it would bring um, economic and quality of life and just beautify all together. And that's a very long-term plan. And I understand that. I've talked to um, city development about that, um, Bill Pepperoni and Keith. And, you know, it's something that's on their minds also. And I think there are things we can do thinking ahead to prepare for that down the road for you know, future generations to really, really make the most of that through the heart of our city. Beautiful, thank you, Catrice. Aaron, what, what, uh, what should we be focused on that we're not? Um, I really appreciated how Catrice talked about um, an element of the environment that is within our city. Often when we talk about environmental issues, we say, oh, the environment is out there. 
Yes. And uh, the urban environment where people live and interact, uh, not just with other people, but the natural environment that is uh, within our city uh, and next to our built environment, that is also in our environment. And um, I agree that uh, we've not long neglected uh, the Provo River. We have a wonderful uh, Provo River Trail. It's actually the most popular park in all of Provo. Uh, but the river itself has been long been neglected. Uh, I've had conversations uh, about this with the city, with Gary McGinn. Um, I actually, he sent me while I was in, in Boulder uh, to look at what they have done with their river. Um, so this has long been uh, something that I'd like to, to see happen. I'd like us to emulate what Ogden did with the Ogden River that comes down through uh, their, their downtown uh, to restore it. This will take a lot of federal dollars and a lot of planning, uh, but it's something uh, worth doing. Uh, but I also think there's a, a many other issues uh, here in the city uh, that deserve our attention. Uh, the, the, um, the canyons, the- um, 10 seconds. Uh, what's happening up there is really important, but uh, the west side um, uh, often gets neglected uh, in, in a lot of ways. And That's I think- time. Yeah, paying attention to uh, open space and preserving farmland is really important. Wonderful, thank you, Aaron. So let's go to the next question. Uh, and here, this falls in the category of a vision for Provo. Um, what conservation idea would you contribute that would impact life in Provo 100 years from now? And uh, Aaron, this time we'll, we'll start with you. And again, I realize we're asking you to go beyond the long-term planning of three to four years. I'd like you to go 100 years out. What, what would you contribute that would actually impact Provo 100 years from now? Um, this would impact Provo 100 years from now, but this would also impact the rest of the world from 100 years from now. We are facing a climate crisis and we need to do our part. Um, and this, we need to take a holistic approach. Uh, we need to think about transportation issues. Uh, we need to think about land issues. Uh, and the best way to preserve open space is to densify uh, and densify mostly uh, in the downtown area, but uh, every neighborhood uh, should welcome, uh, you know, some, some medium uh, density. Uh, and that's the best way to, to protect uh, our, our um, city um, and the entire planet going forward. Um, and uh, we need to think long-term um, and we need to make uh, actual changes. Uh, for all this talk about a climate crisis, I don't see very many people really changing their behavior and our city government um, in this case uh, really uh, doing much about uh, this. We're not taking it seriously enough. Uh, so we, we need to step up and do our part. And doing so will actually improve our quality of life. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Catrice. Thank you, Erin. Um, the reality is that a lot of our energy resources are finite, right? That's just a fact. And it's be so much better if we just, from the get-go, decide to control that narrative as opposed to being forced to do something, right? Um, I've met with our energy um, department and I love their goals, right? As far as being um, carbon neutral, they're going for 60, what is it? I need to look at my notes here, like 60% by 2030. You know, that's impressive. I want to move more forward with, um, we have so many vehicles in our fleet, right? The Provo City. And that's something that I'd really like to work with as far as getting more electric vehicles on that front. The river is a, still another huge one on that. Like that's going to take a long time to really utilize that river and make the use of it with the examples that Aaron and I both gave. Yeah. And that is going to be far out there where we have to plan for that. The west side is a huge one with the lake. Um, we've for so long, over 100 years, we've ruined it, right? And I'm so excited that we have such plans in place to beautify that and make it a place where it's used in recre rec more recreation. When the fact I've been out there on a boat and I'm the only boat out there on a lake so close to so many people that own boats, that's crazy. So I am seconds. I'm grateful that we, with the federal funds and with the foresight of, you know, working on our wastewater and all those other things, the June sucker, the 
um, information is going on, we are going to be able to make that happen. Wonderful. Thank you, Catrice. All right, uh, let's shift to uh, Provo Agriculture. Um, the, the question is, what legal or political tools would you see using to protect land and water to better promote Provo Agriculture? And um, Catrice, if we could start with you this time. Sure. Um, so I love that we have the Leroy McAllister Fund, right? That has, we've you know, used that a couple times in Provo on the west side to save some farmland. I think that's fantastic. Um, there are private property matters, but as far as farmers, like I was out at the Pace Ranch the other day and they have no desire to sell their land right now. And I love that. And I'm glad that they're not being forced to do that. And there was some talk when talking to them and other people out in the west side that they have this fear that they are being forced to sell their land. No one can force them to sell their land. And I'm grateful for that. And I hope that we have these third parties we can work with, right? The Natural Conservatory, McAllister Fund. We need these third party entities to help us conserve this land because the city council conserving it themselves is, isn't safe. That's not a safe way to do it because that could turn, be turned around by another council. So it's really important that we, um, those families that are willing to share their land or conserve it, um, you know, we need to find those third party entities to work with, like Conserve Utah. I know you guys are working towards that and getting, a, hoping to get a fund involved to be involved in that kind of process, but that's going to be a game changer for us. Um, so, and it will benefit the whole city as a whole. Having agricultural and more open space for the whole city to enjoy, besides, I mean, it's not just a benefit to the West Side, it's a benefit to everybody. 10 yeah. seconds. Great. Thank you, Catrice. Aaron, do you want me to repeat the question or are you okay? Sure, go ahead. So the, the question is, what, what legal or political tools would you use, see using to help promote and protect Provo agriculture? Sure, that's a great question. Um, and one that I'm, I'm very concerned with. Um, so uh, preserving agriculture also preserves open space. And uh, the best way to do that, I think, is the mechanism that the Provo Agricultural Commission uh, and Sean Miller and others have been pursuing. And that is working with Nature Conservancy uh, to uh, buy development rights uh, so that we can keep uh, this land uh, permanently farmland. Um, uh, you know, we don't want government intrusion. The farmers, uh, you know, they should have a choice uh, in the matter. Um, uh, and what the city uh, can do um, is they need to be more supportive um, they signed resolutions, but they need to put some money. They need to kick in some money, even though that it's even if it's not a lot, uh, they need to do so. Uh, and my hope is that we can uh, restrict uh, development within uh, the Lakeview Parkway. And once again, this comes back to the issue of density. Uh, we need density on the west side, but near I-15 uh, to relieve pressure uh, to have sprawl uh, go out all the way to the lake. We don't want to become another uh, West Valley City. Yeah, yeah, wonderful, thank you. Um, as I'm going through the questions, I just want to remind uh, everyone, um, please send in your questions uh, that you might have for uh, either of the candidates. We'll let both of them get a chance to answer, but if you would send those in to Adam Johnson, uh, we'll get to the point here in a few minutes where we'll get a chance to have you ask some of your questions. So if you'd be sending those in to, into Adam, please. All right, let me, uh, let me continue on to uh, this idea of promoting uh, green and open space. Um, and uh, Aaron, you've talked about uh, this uh, just a little bit, uh, but I'd like to get some specifics around what you would see doing to promote open space and green space, especially in a growing city that will double and quadruple and just get exponentially bigger in the very near future. Again, it's easy to say, let's save uh, farm. What, what specifically would you do to promote uh, saving open space and green space? And Aaron, this time we'll start with you. Well, open space and green space, uh, as we've discussed, takes a lot of different uh, forms, right? Yes. It can be undeveloped uh, land on the west side that's being used for ranching or uh, just for bird habitat. Um, it can include uh, our parks, uh, which, you know, are, are highly groomed. Um, it can in, include our trails, which are an amenity that uh, people uh, appreciate uh, to a great extent. Um, and I, uh, you know, uh, campaigned 
uh, for, for the RAP tax. And uh, I've been working very closely uh, with our parks department uh, on improvements to the Provo River Trail and with Jake Holdaway on the Wakara Way project uh, and, and making sure once again, uh, that we, we don't have an artificial distinction between uh, the environment and uh, kind of culture uh, where humans live. So we need to make sure we have access uh, to those parks. So people can, you know, if they wanna go for a bike ride on the Provo River Trail, they can feel like they can jump on their bike from their house and ride safely to the trail and they don't need to put their bike on a, a car and drive to the trail right. in, in order to enjoy that amenity. And the same is true for the Bonneville Shoreline Trail as well. Um, so uh, we, need, seconds. Uh, we need open space uh, both uh, on the periphery and within our, uh, in our cities. Okay, thank you, Aaron. Uh, Catrice, how about you? And do you want me to repeat the question, Catrice? Um, no, you're good. Okay. Um, you said something that I think is what I think about a lot as far as the quality of life issues and what I want to consider with development in Provo. You mentioned the how many people are moving in, right? And it is important to me to make sure our amenities and open space in our parks, those are one of our amenities. They're one of the, the most popular amenities that we have in Provo. And so, you know, it's important to me statistically that we don't get less and less considering how you're moving in. You know what I mean? The reality is we're not done. We have to get more because more people are moving in. So we can't be downsizing our green space and parks with that movement. Um, so I do appreciate how much the council has done and how to focus it is. It's obviously been a focus with our mayor and our current council. And that is huge, right? Um, we, I think we, even support from the public. You know, we just bought that land with Slate Canyon. Awesome. Um, I know a family has just donated their land, their family's land. They've donated half of it to be a park for Provo City um, out on the west side. These are, those are huge things. And it's going to keep happening. And we've set up things, the, pro, the council has set up things with the critical hillside overlay, with the Osprey zone. We have these things that we're doing. So even now with the Osprey zone, right, any land that we annex is immediately put in this Ten Osprey seconds. zone. So it's protected. Um, I will support all those movements and even more. I want more parks. I want more open space. Um, so, you know, I think we're hitting a great path and we have more good to do. Great. Thank you. All right, I just have one more question, then we're going to open it up. Again, if you would put your questions in the chat, uh, send them to Adam. Uh, after this next round of questions, he's going to have, uh, he's going to be directing uh, uh, each of you to uh, get a chance to speak up. Um, what I'd like to do is I'd like you to give both of you, uh, Aaron and Catrice, the chance to, to uh, answer the questions I haven't asked that you would like to be able to answer um, uh, about specifically conservation. Uh, about what's in our future, about what you specifically would do. Now, again, we, we don't need to repeat and uh, replow ground we've gone over. And there may be things that I haven't asked you about that you'd like to make sure you get on the table. So Catrice, let's just start with you and see, this is the cleanup questions before we get to the, uh, to the, to the group questions. Anything that uh, you haven't addressed that you'd like to? Um, one thing I think about conservation, we have a wonderful water supply in Provo, right? You know, 45% is from wells, 45% is from the aquifer. We only get 10% from, you know, above water sources. That's incredible. Um, we are blessed with our topography and um, our water rights. But one thing that is important to keep in mind that there is stuff in our canyons where we have water rights, you know, Bunnells Canyon and other places. And there's areas where there are homes and cabins that are on septic tanks. You know, that's something that um, might, you know, that's something we could think about conservation wise and what we do to protect that land and look into getting rid of those septic tanks that could possibly affect the pureness of our water, which is one of the things that is great about Provo. Um, you know, we're unique in that way. And we are, we have such a, we've done such a good job at con conserving our water, uh, you know, protecting our water with our wells that we're doing now to make sure that we're refilling our aquifer. Our aquifer is healthy. We've got the well system going. We've thought ahead on that. And there's more to do in that regard that um, I think we could address. Okay. Thank you, Catrice. Aaron. Um, I think a good indication of what uh, I would do on the council 
uh, can be answered by what I have done already, what I've been doing the last 15 years here in Provo, uh, starting with Lions Park, um, focusing on walkability and bikeability uh, within the city, uh, promoting transit, uh, is serving on uh, the stakeholder committee for BRT. Uh, these are all environmental issues um, that I've been involved in. And uh, also um, uh, in terms of Slate Canyon, uh, I was instrumental in uh, helping make uh, the downhill mountain bike trail possible. I went with uh, Doug Robbins to Park City to check out that trail. I helped organize volunteers uh, for that. Uh, I worked with Ron Adams um, at, the, at the city, the city's tr trail guru, to try to improve access to the Bonneville Shoreline Trail where it cuts through neighborhoods. Uh, and I think uh, in some ways I paved the way for what now Utah Valley uh, Trail Alliance is doing. Um, and then I've already mentioned uh, my work uh, on the Provo River Trail um, and working on uh, providing access and improving uh, safety on that trail. Um, and I think- my record uh, speaks for itself. Okay, thank you, Aaron. All right, we're going to make a shift now. Uh, we're going to ask, uh, give you the opportunity to ask questions of the candidates. Now we're gonna make a little shift here. We're going to keep the, uh, if you keep, uh, Catrice and Aaron, if you keep your responses to 60 seconds, we'd like to get to as many questions as we can. We, uh, we have a hard stop at the top of the hour and we may not go that long, depending on how many questions there are. Uh, but we'd like to get through as many of them as we can. So if you could keep your responses to 60 seconds and Susan will adjust her technical clock uh, for 60 seconds instead of 90. All right, Adam, let me turn it over to you. Uh, who's, who's first? Thanks, Craig. Yeah, I'm really excited for this. We've got questions flowing in about a lot of different topics. So I think this is gonna be, this is gonna be great. Um, we'll start with Carol, Carolyn. Turn the time over to you for your question. You mean Catrice? Oh, Carolyn. Carolyn. Oh, <laughs> um, thanks, Hi. Adam. So, you know, one of the most impactful things that happened as far as conservation goes in Utah Valley in the last several years was the um, really the preservation of Bridalville Falls uh, last winter with it having a conservation easement applied. And we love our involvement in that as well as Utah Open Lands. One of the big questions that's before us right now is what happens next with Bridalville Falls because it is being considered by the State Park Commission for either a state park, a state monument, and an option that we don't discuss a lot but is still on the table is should the control of the um, Bridalville Falls area stay with the county. So I'm curious from each of you, what is your opinion on the state park, state monument designations or having it stay in the county? Let's start. Oh, I'm sorry, Adam, go ahead. Go for it, Aaron, if you'd start for us and then Catrice, please. All right, sure. Um, I do agree that this is one of the most important uh, things that's happened recently. It, it galvanized a movement. It created the organization that you are a part of and, and I can congratulate you for that. It's unfortunate um, that it uh, happened in some ways. Um, I think it, it uh, demonstrates a severe failure of leadership on our county level. Um, and uh, another reason why we need reform uh, of our county government. It's a, a shame that uh, Proposition 9 uh, failed. Um, and uh, so I, I would uh, say, no, we don't want to re return it to the, the county. Uh, that, that should not be on, on the table. Um, they, they are not wise stewards of our environment. Uh, they're short-sighted. seconds. Um, and I think we should uh, consider the other two options. Great, thank you, Aaron. Catrice. Um, I, that is a huge thoroughfare, right? Thoroughfare, correct? With bikes and walkers and runners. Um, it is so connected to the rest of the trails and rest of the system. I don't see a state park being the proper way to do it. That would cause people to be charged to go there. And there's so much use there and quick use, right? I mean, some people stay there for hours, some people picnic, but then some people are just going through on a bike, a hike, a walk, a run. So I would be more moved towards the monument. We need it protected. The state will protect it. It can be used by everybody free of charge. I love I love how when open spaces are free of charge, right? It's just such a leveling thing. Every one of so every socioeconomic can access it and enjoy it and make use of it. So I think that'll be the way for it to be most protected. Thank you, Catrice. Appreciate that. 
Um, going forward, Stan Jensen asked two questions and both of these were to specific candidates. So Stan, I'd like to invite you to unmute and first ask your question to Catrice and then following Catrice's answer, uh, pose your second question to Aaron. Okay. Um, yeah, so Catrice mentioned making better use of the river. And I was just wanting to elaborate on that if you had some specific thoughts and ideas on how we might be able to do that. Okay, you ready for me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Please, that's um, so we have a few things. There's been talk right now, part of the river is, you know, the motion picture studios on there, right? I know the city has talked to Provo, uh, I mean, to the BOU about that. And there's some talk that they want to move that to another location where they do films. Um, there's, so that could be utilized possibly. It's looking at down the road, how we can work with commercial and the city to access that land and make it usable in a different sort of like redevelop it right i mean we have a we have a macy's that's backing up to it that's nah. you know we have the dealership now the dealership's important to provo because that is a big economic thing but could that be moved to a different part of provo even closer to the freeway and more access you know more like orem does but keeping it in provo um i think you know that's a long-term plan but i i know the city's been thinking about it and i think that it can be done I think that we can do improvements there where we're utilizing it better. I know some some development starting on the north, which I'm excited about that. That's, but that's a private development. Great. Stan, I'm actually gonna cut you off for just one second. I think before we move on to that second question, Aaron, I'd actually love it if you would be willing to answer this question too, as you also uh, spoke about the Provo River. Would you be willing to answer? Or if um, uh, Catrice mentioned the uh, motion picture studios, but even uh, more significant in some ways is the... Uh, Riverside Golf Course, uh, a uh, exclusive domain of the, the uh, wealthy and, and well-connected. Um, if I had my way, the river would go th through that golf course and we, we'd still keep the golf course, right? We just uh, open it up to the public. Um, it's a shame that it, it veers away from the Provo River and runs along University Avenue. Um, it, it hardly deserves the name the Provo River Trail. Uh, on that section. Um, um, so I, I think, as I suggested earlier, we should follow uh, the model of, of Ogden um, and uh, uh, work to uh, restore the river uh, to its, uh, uh, you know, more closer seconds. to what it was and, and uh, make it more of an amenity that people will value. Thank you, Aaron. Appreciate it. Stan, I'd love it if you'd be willing to ask that second question now. I believe that was, again, direct towards Aaron. Um, yeah, it just you, you talked about densifying, and I was just uh, asking if you could describe how you would do that and what, what that is exactly. Sure. Um, if, you, if we are fighting uh, density, as, as uh, some are, um, uh, in your neighborhood, even medium density, uh, even like townhomes, um, then, um, and if you're running for, for that reason, if that's your motivating, motivating force for, for running, uh, then that means you, you, say you favor sprawl uh, and you're really not in favor of, of protecting uh, the environment. Um, we we uh, need uh, density, uh, high density downtown. Uh, and and this, is, this is about people, right? We need there, there are 50,000 uh, people uh, who needs beds every night. Um, we've, we've got a housing crisis on our hand. And that, that's also Ten an environmental seconds. crisis. Um, and then we need density uh, along our transit routes, uh, but we also need a density, uh, you know, medium density uh, in our suburban neighborhoods as Hi. well. Thank you, Aaron. Catrice, I'd like to give you a, a second if you have any thoughts on this, on densifying within Provo and how you see the future of th that plan going forward. Yes, um, I'm all for more density downtown along, along the mass transit routes. Um, I'm even for increasing the height requirements that are now limited as well as minimizing the um, square footage in those particular areas. Um, as far as urbanizing most of Provo and doing high density through most of Provo. I'm not a fan of that. I think that, I think it should be up to the neighborhoods. I'm not up to dictating 
hundred percent in different, you know, we need to keep the vibe of the neighborhood. I don't want high density all throughout the West. I don't want high, de high density up in our foothills. I mean, there's just a lot of, I think most people did not move here for an urban big city experience and the, and the problems that come with that. We have conservation issues as far as our water and traffic and infrastructure. And, you That's know, we are nice. limited between the mountains and the lake. And um, I don't want any of us to lose the reasons that we live here or our quality of life. Great, thank you, Catrice. Um, I'd like to change gears a little bit to a question that was sent in and I'll go ahead and read this one. What is your opinion of the island development that has been proposed for Utah Lake? Catrice would love if you'd answer this first, and then we'll give some time to air. Um, I actually attended the lake symposium that was done at UVU uh, like a month, month two, one or two months ago, but that was really interesting. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I learned a lot. It was an all day event and that was discussed and it doesn't, I don't, it doesn't make much, a lot of sense to me. Um, as far as what I understand of it. It doesn't seem like it would be in the best interest of our city or the lake. I do want to utilize the lake better. I want to get it cleaner. I want to make it something more enjoyable for recreation and actually usage of the residents. There should be more, um, just more recreation period, more boating, more paddle boarding, more kids playing. You know, we need to get rid of the, we need to work on getting it in a position, bugs and smell and everything else wise that it is just more functional and and it, make it the gem that it can be for our city. Thank you, Catrice. Aaron. It's a really dumb idea and I don't ever wanna see it happen. I don't think I need to say anything more than that. <laughs> Great, appreciate that. Well, we'll go into our next question. Um, we're gonna turn the time over to Sean Miller now, if you'd un unmute and uh, pose your question. All right, I'm here, but my lighting is bad. Um, thanks for your, all, your, all your comments. Uh, my question is, is to both of you, and that is, uh, what do you think are some of the best suggestions we have for the city to improve uh, transportation in the city? How do we promote alternative forms of transportation? All right, uh, Aaron, let's start with you. Sure, um, I've been working on this issue for the past 15 years. Um, I don't think I have the, the best ideas. I think the best ideas come from other cities um, who, who've uh, been urbanizing and, and dealing with growth. Um, I think we took a huge step forward uh, in terms of uh, putting in UVX, um, but we need to do more to make it even more uh, successful. And that includes uh, you know, changing our, our land use and zoning policies to allow for uh, greater density along that corridor. Uh, you know, so people are, are closely connected to, to UVX. Uh, we need BRT on State Street. Um, and despite our, you know, being a university city and hosting, uh, you know, a, a major private university, uh, the city has then done next to nothing. Ten seconds. Has done next to nothing to uh, make uh, it attractive for students not to bring a car to Provo by investing in, in walkability and bikeability to connect the community to campus. Time. Thank you, Erin. Patrice. Um, UBX is the most successful line in Utah. Um, it does 12,000 people a day using it before COVID. 63% um, of people commute, single commuters, and most of them are going to the Lehigh area. Um, I do think UBX needs to extend to the point of the mountain. I think it'll make a huge difference in our city and um, commuting. And I think, I think we'll, I think it would be a really great line to have. So I think that needs to be looked into. Um, the, I talked to UTA and they are doing some, they're gonna do some preliminary things, even like kind of like an Uber for mass transit, um, but that will be smaller for some of the areas like the West side and other places that are not fully 10 seconds of a full bus line yet but um our future also we need a uvx line going out to the airport that will be for sure in our future the airport and the uh sports sports complex <laughs> great thank you catrice appreciate that we'll move on to our next question from ross c ross if you unmute that would be great hello 
thank you guys so much for taking the time to uh, do this tonight. So we've talked a lot about Bridalville Falls. Uh, Provo Canyon is probably one of my favorite parts of Utah from the mouth of the canyon going all the way up uh, to uh, Deer Creek. So what else specifically can we do to protect, again, Bridalville Falls is obviously the crown jewel, but the rest of the canyon to, to keep it in its pristine state. Um, let's go ahead and start with Aaron. Sure. Um, that's a great question, Ross. Um, and one that I've been concerned uh, with and once again, uh, involved in, in uh, addressing. Um, I think people have a, a wonderful appreciation of uh, the section of Provo Canyon from, uh, you know, up to South Fork, right? Uh, this is what they can use and experience uh, on the trail. Uh, after uh, South Fork up to Deer Creek, uh, it's basically just the road, unless you're a, a, a brave roadie and, and, and willing to, to ride along uh, the, 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 uh, you know, on the shoulder there. Um, so I've been working uh, very closely with uh, uh, Jim Price at MAG uh, and uh, to, to uh, extend the trail, the Provo River Trail, all the way to Deer Creek. Uh, and I'm really pleased that the state uh, earlier this year uh, approved uh, the last hurdle to make that happen. Um, so I think if people are experiencing uh, these places, they will uh, appreciate them more and, and be willing to invest in them. Thank you, Aaron. Um, there's been talk about doing more, you know, it's, it's funny how Alpine Loop in that area, right, has changed since I was a kid. Like it used to be that you could go anytime and go on it and it wasn't that busy and you could have a peaceful drive. It's like bumper to bumper these days. Um, I don't know if there's something to be looked at there. I've also thought about like our river. I know some places alternate, um, alternate fishing and the tubing every other day kind of thing. Cause you, you go down that to, we go tubing down there all the time. My kids love it. And these poor fishermen, like, I, I feel like there's this fight there on Provo river that, um, is, I think it could be really good for the river and, um, helping that area and the recreation that are, people are trying to do to maybe do something, looking at solution like that, where we alternated or something. Those are some things right. I've been thinking about rock Canyon or Provo Canyon. Great. Thank you. I'll go ahead and read this next question for us. What can you do as a council member to promote a cultural change in advocating for locally grown produce and products, understanding that Utah is an island that could be cut off at a moment's notice? Catrice, would you answer this for us first? Um, I think it could be an education thing. We really need, I know one of the things I want, really want to do for the city is um, an app. And information like that could be so like where do you get this stuff and it's sometimes hard to find that information like even having something where we can get local produce or local goods or local you know we could have a section on local commercial stuff and produce would be one of them um i know my family and i go to the farmer's market they have some there they do the one at byu that um, farmer's market there but um i'm sure there's a lot of people that would like to get at other times in these markets and it'd be a matter of knowing where to get it education Great, thank you so much. Aaron. Sure, um, so I think this is an issue um, that goes far beyond Provo. Uh, it's all of Utah County. Um, and I think uh, we, we talked about um, preserving farmland on the, the west side of Provo, uh, but we need to think, be thinking about uh, preserving land in Santa Quinn and uh, places in South Utah County where there's some very rich farmland. Um, and as long as we're uh, continuing with, with kind of uh, land use policies that encourage uh, sprawl uh, and encourage uh, people to, to drive uh, long distances uh, to, to their, their destinations, um, we're, we're undermining uh, local agriculture um, and we're undermining our very quality of life. Thank you, Aaron would like to just conclude with one last question for you both. And I'd like to ask, would you please share with us your favorite story that you've spent outdoors here in Provo in your time here? Aaron, would love to start with you. Um, I got in, I think it's well known that I am a bicycle advocate um, and a commuter uh, 
cyclist year round. Um, I, I don't uh, do that only because I care about the environment, but also I just love breathing fresh air. I love being connected to my uh, community. Um, unfortunately, I don't spend uh, as much time as I'd like doing uh, my first love, and that is uh, recreational cycling, um, including mountain biking. Uh, one of my favorite places to go here in Provo is up South Fork. Um, to, to up to Big Springs. There's some wonderful uh, trails uh, up there. And um, I, I think uh, it would be wonderful if, if more people uh, were able to experience that and, and gain a, an appreciation of, of the, the, the wonderful natural environment we have uh, within our city, uh, both within and, and, and beyond it. Thank you, Aaron. Appreciate that. Patrice. Um, two things. One of my favorite memories growing up, I had a horse. Me and my best friend both had a horse. And we had it up um, across from Angela's house at the Smiths. And we would ride all the time in up to like Squaw Peak and all those, all the foothills. And so many good memories. That's like one of my favorite childhood memories. We did it every chance we could get. Weekends, nights after school, all summer. Um, brought me a lot of joy. Currently, my favorite, I'm a big skier and I love to ski. And I ski with my kids and we ski together. And it's just awesome living so close to Sundance and up Provo Canyon that we can go skiing. Even if we want to go for a couple hours, if that's all the time we have, we can do that. It's a, such a rare thing to be able to live in the city that we live in with the amenities that we do and be able to ski that quickly. It brings me so much joy. And I love watching my kids get better and better I'm and have a fun day. And it just, Sundance is one of my happy places. Thank you, Catrice. We just want to thank you both for being on today. We really appreciate you fielding all these questions. I apologize to everyone. There was a few more questions that we didn't get to, but I'm sure if there's specifics that Catrice and Aaron would both be willing to field those another time over Feel email. Feel free to email us. Yep. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> but again, thank you both so much for your time and everyone for hopping on today. Again, feel free to uh, stay in touch with Contrib Utah Valley through our social channels and our website, and we'll keep you up to date on local uh, events and initiatives coming up. In fact, Adam, if you would put up that slide as we uh, hug and kiss and say goodbye here. Um, this, is our, uh, this is our paid commercial advertisement. Um, this, uh, this, the things that we're talking about don't happen without your engagement. Uh, so delighted that uh, almost 50 people would join us uh, on this. Uh, we, post these, we post these town halls on our websites and people can watch them after the website as well. Um, please consider getting involved. Uh, there's a number of good things to get involved in. This is one of them. We need you. So please, uh, the timing is right. Uh, we need your help. So please consider getting involved. And let me uh, just add to what Adam has said. Catrice and Aaron, delighted that we have the quality of, uh, of neighbors who are willing to step up and, uh, and do such an important work. So thank you uh, to both of you and uh, best of luck to you. And thank you everyone for joining us for this town hall. Uh, we'll see you at the next one. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.